Hello fashion lovers, you are welcome to another episode on our product fashion TV. Today we'll be making female senator and we'll start with the pants. As you can see I measured 2.5 inches. That will serve as my hem folding. The length of the pants is 40. We will take off we'll take off one inch. Which will later serve as a um, my belt band. The belt band is usually 1.25 to 1.5 max. That is the height of the belt band. So when you add your belt band, it augments the total length of the pant. We we'll measure our flap now or our seat. And in that picture, it shows you how it's been measured. Now, measure from our waist to our knee is usually 22. Some people, 21. So, we mark the same measurements across. Just have a straight line. The heat price is 9. This is the difference between the male pant and the female pant. We take into consideration the heat area. The average female is uh, 8. But for taller women, we use 9 inches. So on the, on the crouch line, we divide our hip into 2 which is 42 divided by 4, 10.5. Then we added the 2.5 inches to it. As you can see, we took out 2 inches down. And we take that same measurement up. Subtract 0 0.75. So, from the crotch line, to the waistline, you should have a slant vertical line. On. You make an arc from the hip line to the crotch line. Afterwards, on the hip line, you divide your hip by four. Mine was giving me ten point five. The waist is 34. We divide the the waist by 4, which is giving me 8.5. Then we add one inch allowance, giving us 9.5. This is our hip cuff. Easy for female wears, and this is the leg cuff. We join the lines from the waist, the hip, and the crotch line. We divide our tie line into two. So the same reading we put place it on the knee line and also on the hem line. This is going to serve as our crease line after ironing the hem is 14 divided by 4 the answer you mark on both sides the knee is 19 19 divided by 4 divide the results on both sides as seen in the video now I'm marking you can see how neat it is with you know, the right instrument or tool your work 
you begin to appreciate your work even from the cutting stage. So on the waistline, we we'll come down by one inch and make a slant. The pocket opening I used 7.5, vertically 2.5. I've seen in the video. Watch how I folded this before cutting. I folded that so I won't fall short of fabric when I'm folding. So now, after cutting the front part, we we'll place it on the back to cut the back part. What I'm doing, I'm trying to place my front part panel well, so I would still maintain the shape of trousers I want. So I measure from the edge to the midpoint of the front trousers, which is giving 9.5, so I make sure Extend your lines out. The sewing allowance is what we add at the back, and it's two inches. So I'm marking two inches on the hemline, two inches on the knee line. Two inches too on the tie line, but before that, on the crease point, you mark one inch and make a slant as seen in the video, or you can just go down by half an inch. So I'm marking my two inches, an extra one inch just in case the client increases uh, wants it to be a little bit free so our, our hip is 42 42 divided by 2 will give us 21 to absorb myself five sewing allowance from the top, we mark 2.5 upwards, that's on the waistline, we mark. Our waist is 34, half of 34 is 17. So, mark your 17. One inch for our dart, then 1.5 will also serve as the allowance. I 
I'll use my armhole to make an arc from the hip point to the cr cross line like so Now watch how I mark it. Back that the mark 4.75 upwards, mark one inch. I do this because I realize after taking in my darts, that part goes down a little. So, with the, the fabric now, you can just trim after sewing your dots. A female pant. Pant in general is very easy. You just uh, put your mind into it. Taking my notches, they are very important, especially if you're cutting for other people to sew. The notches will guide them. As you can see, so I'm taking my fold now. 1.5 will be my for my slit opening, two inches for my allowance. Then 10 inches is my result after dividing my hip or the highest part of my the upper body by four. In this case, her hip is the widest part of her body. I like to have a a crease at the middle part of my clothes it makes my work neat and easy that is my master plan to mark the right angle then measure 2.5 inches that will serve as my hem for my folding The length of the top is 29. So I'll be taking off 1.5 inches from the 29 because the back, which is higher than the front, adds to the total length of the top. So take note of this. My measurement is 29, but I took off 1.5. The next circumference of our client is 16. We we'll divide our 16 three times on our tape measure. One. Two. So the answer you mark it horizontally, you add half inch to it and mark vertically, and this will give you a knock serving as the neckline 
the same value you got when dividing your neck by into three will be your shoulder slant. The shoulder of our client is nine plus half inch. You can see I pivoted my tape. Check out other videos for clearer illustration. If need be, the camera was really shaky. Now, look at how I place my tape. 1.5 was out already. Then I divided my bust by 4. It is 10. You take the outer body measurement then add your allowance to it in this case i added 1.75 inches which includes my sewing allowance too my sewing allowance is half inch so you mark the the hip line which is 25 so that is where i'm take in my hip measurement divided by four plus my last plus my last then the remaining is the seat open now for female we take into consideration the half length or the smallest part of their waist. The measurement I took was 20. I came up by 1.5. So this is where I took my my waist measurement and uh, my allowance also added. using my leg curve to join the lines nice and smooth I use my armhole curve to mark out my armhole. As you can see, the front and back armhole. Your armhole is never the same. Now I'm placing the front panel we just cut on a fabric so I will cut the back part. The back panel is usually higher than the front with 4 inches. 
to mark on my four inches around the shoulder line then marking out I'm cutting it out so I'll have enough room for the neckline. As usual, I usually pay good attention to my neckline. Fitting also starts from the neckline. So if your neck is not fit enough, the client would rather complain. So I mark half insulin allowance and turned the back part to the front so I can get in much as seen in the video and then I trim I trim the armhole So take note of this. I think the initial measurement I had, I mark it down. Using my armhole curve to connect my line to the notch I made. Now, usually I'll cross check. You have to double check, especially the neckline and the armhole. You don't want to make mistakes there. No, trust me, you want it. To lose a loan, it's not easy. So you have to be careful. Make sure you take your readings. So after taking both the fronts and the back the neckline reading we got our answer and we're ready to cut mind you I'm um, sewing with 0.25 inches now I'm cutting the front armhole. It's usually not the same. It's never the same. Never the same. Now look at this. I'll measure around my armhole. and add 1.5 inches. Now we'll use the 10.5 we got to fold our fabric. I like to iron. The crease makes my work easy. And next to perfect too. So I'll use my 90 degrees ruler. To have an accurate right angle. I can't do it without that. So from the side that is not folded, you mark four inches downwards. Then you 10.5. You measure it as seen in the video. The trail line like so. Mm. 
the shoulder is 9 which is 18 you can see the allowance I add I give sleeve is 18 plus 2 inches hem in allowance draw my straight line the sleeve is 15 the round sleeve or bicep plus half inch allowance will give us 8 Now here you divide it into four parts. So watch closely. One, and you find the midpoint of both parts. You mark half inch mark 0 0.75 inches then half an inch down watch closely how I use my arm hole curl to make the slope so after that you cut the back part as you can see there are two slopes one is for the front one is for the back see how I took just two parts of the slope and make a match. The front and the back of the sleeve is not the same. So that's it. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Turn on your notification bell too. Thanks.